One of my favorite tools in Ableton Live is the drum rack. And for those of you that know about NPCs, you know, or machines or, you know, that type of interface, this is the uh, software equivalent, you could say. So let me just go over here to drums and I'll just drag an, an empty drum rack over here. And here you can see this is reminiscent of an MPC. Let me just quickly show you what an MPC looks like for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about. These are MPCs. This is a, a traditional MPC right here. MPC 3000. A lot of you will probably know it from the hip-hop community. A lot of hip-hop records at least used to be made on MPCs. It used to be the go-to for a lot of hip-hop beat makers. And as you can see, there are four pads horizontally and vertically in this grid shape right here. And if we just go back, you'll see here we have four pads this way and this way, creating a 16 pad grid. The great thing about this is what you can do is you can just go and find a sample that you like. So let's just go to the Beat Tools pack that we had earlier and we'll go to samples and we'll go to one shots, drums, bells. So here we go. We got this really cool bell sound. So I'm just going to drag it over here onto C1. And now what's happened is it's opened up a so-called simpler, which we're not going to cover in this course, but it's a, a basic version of a sampler. And for those of you who want to get into sampling, you should definitely check it out. It's a lot of fun. But for our intents and purposes, what's happened here is we've dragged this sample onto this cell right here, and it's just uh, put it into a sampler in order for us to be able to play it. So now I can just click on the play button right here, and we can just trigger this sound. And we can fill these 16 pads up. So let's say, you know, I just put this up here. As you can see, we have a sound here and a sound here. And if you look over here, there's a small grid and it, it shows you this sample is here and this sample is here, which means we can go up to this part of the grid and we can just fill this entire thing up all across a, an entire keyboard. So that's what's happening here. So you can put, uh, I don't know, I guess it would probably be um, 127 sounds, I'm guessing. I don't know for sure, though. Yeah, you can just fill this thing up with samples. And then for each sample, you can then go in and you can uh, manipulate the sample. Another really cool thing, which you should read about in the manual, manual if you want to learn more about this, is you can go into audio effects and say, for instance, I want to add a delay uh, to this sound, if I was to take a delay and put it here, yes, it's going to delay this sound, but it's also going to delay this sound. But I might not want the delay on this. So what I can do is I can take my delay and just put it onto the cell. And now you can see that this delay is only here. But if I go to this cell, it's not there anymore, but you have to place it in between where this line is in order for it to be only within that cell. So for instance, I might want to take uh, an auto filter and I can just drag it over here to this one. And now it, there's an auto filter on here. And I can change that. Oops. So you can see this way you can create really complex um, MPC style uh, samplers. And for me, on my push, you can see, I don't know if you can see really well, but this one's lit up and this one's lit up. So this is a great way of working with samples. And for those of you that might not have that many samples, but you're on Ableton Live, I believe this uh, sample pack is downloadable for everyone. If you go to Ableton and find this 64 Pad Lab by an amazing producer called Mad Zach. Here is the link right up here. Uh, yeah, just download it and uh, I think it'll automatically install in Ableton. I have it installed already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this drum rack and go to packs. And here are the drum racks. And uh, yeah, they're all really cool. They're amazing, actually. Uh, I'm just going to take any of these. I'm just going to drag it over here. And now for me with the push, I have this entire eight by eight matrix full of sounds. And as you can see right here, this goes all the way up 
from down here up to here, it's just full of sounds. And you can trigger them here. You could also go in and create a MIDI clip. And then if I zoom, actually, let me just move this. Here you can see all the different sounds. Make sure that the preview button's on. And you could, as we just did, you could go in and create um, MIDI clips this way and create your loops that way. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this to trigger. So I'm just going to quickly fill in a few sounds just to make the track a little more interesting. So let's go through all of our parts again and we'll use the drum rack and just trigger some cool samples to add some flavors here and there, just one-off things. Here we go. So now again, as I've done before, I'm just going to experiment and try to find a sound that might um, inspire me. That's cool. I'm just coloring the different pads on my push so I can find them easier. Mm, that's a nice sound. That's cool. All right. So as you can probably see, I've got different colors on my push. These are sounds that stood out to me while I was going through the track. So now... I have to, f I just, uh, just like uh, putting spices on in my food. I'm just going to throw a little few sounds here and there just to make things a little more interesting. So let's go to the intro. Yeah, so I, I like this hi-hat playing quarter notes. So I'm just going to record that four. There we go. Now, as you can see in here, this is pretty off, but everything is so quantized, I actually like it. So I'm going to leave that. Let's go to the verse. All right, so let's record something. Here we go. One, two, three, four. I think this sound that I'm about to play will be nice at the end of this verse. Two, three, four, three, two. I think I'm going to make this an eight bar loop. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four, three, two. Here we go. There we go. Like I said, I'm, I don't want to fill this up too much because there's a lot going on anyway. These are just like spices. So let's do the chorus. Okay, let's put this on bar four. Two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four. That's nice. Let's go to the breakdown.
right, let's use this. Three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four. And last but not least, the outro. Yeah, let's put in this. Here we go. One, two, one, two, hit record. Three, four, two, three, four, two. Three, two. Actually, no, I'm going to undo that. Let's do this again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three. And here we're going to put it. Three, two, three, four. All right, let's just listen through each part. Turn off the metronome. Here we go. First, three, four. Chorus. Breakdown. And the outro. Two, three, four. And stop. Nice. All right, so the challenge for this lesson is either go and find Mad Zach's 64 Pad Lab and start experimenting with some of those sounds using your controller to input them. Obviously, you can use this or you can use your mouse to program them in, whatever floats your boat. Yeah, just go through each of the scenes and just add just little spices here and there. Don't, I mean, obviously, if you want, you can fill it up as much as you like. But um, just for this exercise, I would say just add just tiny bits of sounds here and there and um, just try to, to take your composition up to that next level. And in the next tutorial, I'm just going to show you another really quick, cool tip, how you can save some of these sketches for other compositions that you make so you have pre-made, customized clips.